What's Rosalie doing upstairs so long? Dressing. As a date. No? Who is it tonight? Charlie, Walter, George? Not neither. A new one. Again? He's a young girl, J Jake. Do you hear me complaining? I'm glad I have a popular daughter. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Rosalie, your date will be here momentarily. I'm almost ready, Ma. Ma, what coat should I wear, the long or the short? Well, I would say you should wear your short. The short? No, I think I'll wear the long. If she knows what she wants to wear, so why does she ask you? There comes a time in every girl's life. When a parent says white, they say black, or vice versa. My motto is never argue with a woman. <laughs> I never do. Then you'll be a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> Rosie, I told you, your date is here already. Good evening. Oh, good evening. I'm Rosalie's mother. Uh, how do you do, Mrs. Goldberg? My name is Stanley Hess. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Hess? Won't you please enter? Right. Meet the family. This is uh, uh, Mr. Goldberg. How do you do, Mr. How do you do? And uh, my Uncle David. Romaine. How do you do, Uncle And this is family. Hi. I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, oh, sit down, please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> See this? <laughs> well, it's your place, Emmy. The Oh, I, I see you read uh, women's wear, Mr. Goldberg. Hmm? Oh, yes. You're interested in the dress business? Well, um, it's just business in general. You see, I'm uh, majoring in uh, business administration at the university. Oh, that's very interesting. Oh, it is. It's the analytical side of business that interests me particularly. You see, uh, trends and uh, cycles and influences, etc. Now, Mr. Goldberg, in your field particularly, we find that economic effects and seasonal slumps are closely allied to the uh, state of other industries. Isn't that right? That's right. And the buying public is uh, considerably influenced by factors not within your control or even within the control of the dress industry as a whole. Isn't that right? That's right. And so the predictability of net loss or gain in the dress field is extremely difficult to chart. Exactly. <laughs> Very astute. Hello, Stan. Oh, good evening, Rosie. I see you met the family. Yes, we acquainted ourselves. <laughs> good night, Ma. Good night. Good night, Papa, darling. Good night. Good night, Sammy. I'll say good night. Well, very nice to have met you all. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Uh, come again. All right, I will. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> now, if anyone should ask me, I would say that's a boy. Call Rosalie to the table, Molly. She's not eating with us tonight. She's sick? A date. A, a date. She's dining out. Oh, very fancy. <laughs> Rosalie's a, fa a fancy girl. Go well. Some cough, Uncle David. It's only my lar larynx. Who's Rosalie going out with, Molly? Stanley? A new gentleman caller. Who? I believe his name is Richard Keller. Keller? I never met him. Mm. Ma, should I wear my hair? Wear it up. I'll say up, she'll say down. <laughs> no, I think I'll wear it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's evidently very clear that a mother's opinion is not highly regarded in this house. <laughs> Be happy you have a daughter with a mind of her own. That's right, Molly. You'd sing back when you were a girl. A, a girl. Listen, when I was a girl, I didn't ask. I was told. And you did what you were told? Always. Uh. <laughs> well, depending. <laughs> it was a different one. Hmm? I better get my la la lozenges. Oh. Oh, just, uh, I'll get it. <laughs> Rosalie, your date is here. Good evening. Oh, come in. I am Rosalie's uncle, Mr. Rome <laughs> Romain. How do you do? Hello. And this is the parents. Mr. and Mrs. It is Samuelie the bro, the bro, brother. How do you do, Mr. Goldberg? How do you do? Mr. Goldberg? How do you do? You're at the university? Yes, sir. Then you must know Stanley Hess. He's in business administration. <laughs> well, you see... <laughs> Say, that's some cough. You don't have a fever, do you? I told you you didn't look so, so, so all day. Don't worry about me, Mom. You're a doctor? I'm a pre-med student. Hmm. My Sally, the doctor's also a doctor. Oh, no, <laughs> doctor. Is that so? Hmm. Well, am I racing or am I so, 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 so mm, your pulse is normal and you don't seem to have a fever and there. Mm. And what's... Isn't any sign of inflammation. 
<laughs> then what's the matter with <laughs> me? I'd say just a common cold. Hmm. Is that your diagnosis? You just get plenty of rest. That's the only thing you can do for a cold. Hmm. You know, it's a funny thing, Mr. Goldberg. There's not a thing you can do about a cold once you've caught it. Mm. With all the medical research that's going on, nobody's even been able to isolate the germ. <laughs> well, someday they'll find it, but there's a lot of work to be done yet. <laughs> exactly the words of my soul at the door. <laughs> Doctor. Next 10 years are going to see some great advances in the field of medicine. Look how the whole field has changed just because of antibiotics. Mm. In surgery alone, operations that used to be almost impossible are practically routine. And the lifespan has been increased tremendously because of new medical discoveries. It's a pretty exciting field to be going into. Hello, Richard. Hi, Rosie. Hello, Rosie. Gee, you look nice. Thank you. You met the family? Yes, yeah. oh, uh, certainly, certainly. Well, I'm ready if you are. It's very yes. nice to have met you. Bye, darling. Bye, Bye. 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 Have a good time. Oh, we will. We're going to see a revival of Aerosmith. Oh, the moving pictures about the doctor? That's my salad, the doctor's first. <laughs> favorite. Good night. You take care of that cold, Mr. Romaine. Oh, I will. I, I, I will. Mm. If anybody would ask me, that's my idea for finding bo bo boy. Amazing. What's the amazement? Television. You turn the knob and lo, look what comes into your heart. Education, ideas, I don't know. Knowledge and education. That's what makes the world revolve on its axis. Jake, dear, would you believe when we first met that we would live to see such a phenomenon? Rosalie is more phenomenal than television. Three different boys in a week. It's a record, no? <laughs> Who counts? Who's tonight, Richard? No, not Richard. Somebody new. Not Stanley? I think Rosie said his name was Robinson. First or less? Last, I think. <laughs> Listen, whoever it'll be, it'll be. You're a fatalist, Molly. Listen, when you have a daughter in these days, you have to be. Ma, what dress do you think I should wear? The red or the blue? Should I answer her? Answer. Who knows? Tonight you may be right. Well, uh, I would wear the red if you're asking me. I think I'll wear the blue. <laughs> 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 Rosalie! The doorbell rang! Oh, hello. Oh, how do you do? I'm Rosalie's mother. Are you the date, I presume? Yes, I'm Michael Robinson. I see. Won't you come in, please? Thank you. Uh, I'd like to present the family, Mr. Goldberg. How do you do, Mr. Goldberg? How do you do? And uh, this is my Uncle David. Romain. Mr. Romain. And uh, mm -hmm. this is Rosalie's brother, Sammy. Oh. Hello. Hi. <laughs> uh, Rosalie, uh, Mr. Robinson is in the living room awaiting you. I'll be down in a minute, Mike. She'll be down in a minute, Mike. Well, uh, we were just watching television. No. And I was just remarking what a wonderful invention. No. All you do is turn on a knob and lo and behold, pictures, mm. like magic. Oh, not magic, Mrs. Goldberg. When you think about it, it's a very simple principle. The most difficult thing to understand about television is that the human mind could conceive it. Oh, uh, you're acquainted with the subject? Well, in a way, I'm majoring in theoretical physics at the university. Oh, theoretical. That must be a very interesting subject. Oh, I think it is. Theoretical physics is going to be my life's work. Ah, how noble. To devote your whole life to the advancement of the knowledge of mankind. When I graduate, I'm in hopes I can get a post at one of the big universities. That way, I can do some experimental work in the labs, as well as taking care of my teaching duties. You know, it's the ideas that count, Mrs. Goldberg, not necessarily the results. You never know when one tiny experiment might lead you to a door that would open on something fresh and exciting. Oh, theoretical physics is like exploring new lands. <laughs> it's one of the very few frontiers left. Hi, Mike. Oh, hi, Rosie. You all set? All ready. Good. Did you meet the family? Yes, yes. I did. You got acquainted, Rosalie, dear. Well, good night, good night. Mike. Have a wonderful time, good night. Darling. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night, Michael. Good night, Mrs. Goldberg. Good night. Well, if you ask me, 
That's my idea of a wonderful boy. It was a delicious dinner, Molly. You all did yourself. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. <laughs> did you notice? Rosalie didn't even touch a morsel of the strudel, her favorite. Maybe she wasn't hungry. A growing girl should have some nourishment. Maybe she's upset about something or other. Sammy, hmm? when did you and Dora decide to go steady? I don't remember. Well, how did you decide to? I don't think we ever made a decision to go steady, Rosie. It just happened. Oh. She's going steady? That's what's on her mind. Well, she's got a problem. Richard and Mike and Stan all want to go steady with her. She can't make up her mind. So let her ultimate. That's not the way they want it. You're not asking me. But if you would, and you have to make a choice, there's three nice boys, Rosalie. Yes, Ma? And I, I want you to know that I only want your happiness, Rosalie. I know that, Ma. Well, I would say Michael. And if you'd ask me why I say Michael, I would say because he's a boy that loves his work, a boy that someday will be a professor, a boy that'll be a man with knowledge and learning. Mike is a nice boy. And to share such a life, Rosalie, is a privilege. Think about it, Ma. Rosalie, I know you're not asking me, but I only want what's good for you. So if it was up to me, I would say, Go steadily with Richard. After all, what's more important to the world than doctors? To heal the sick, to, to find new medicines. Th that's important. To make the world healthy. So, if you would ask me, I would say, go with Richard. I'll think about it, Uncle David. I, I think, Rosalie. Uh, but uh, remember, a doctor's wife is also helping the world. Rosalie, come here a minute, please. Yes, Pa. Sit down. Uh, Rosalie, as a father who has only your best interests at heart, and if you would listen to a little advice from an older and maybe a wiser head, I would say go steady with Stanley. Why him in particular? Because a businessman is an important man in this community. He helps the country maintain its standard of living. He creates jobs and new products. He keeps the wheels rolling, Rosalie. He's the backbone of the nation. Well, Sammy, who's your choice? Don't you have a little advice to give to your sister? Everybody else around here seems to have a favorite. Well, what's the matter? Aren't you interested? You all seem to know what's good for me and who I should or shouldn't go out with. Well, if you think you've helped me, you haven't. I'm more mixed up now than I was before. All you've done is confuse me. I only made a suggestion. I know already the kind of suggestion. And you didn't? I only said Michael because I thought if she has to go steady, he's a nice boy. The teacher? The researcher. Why not Stanley? Is there something wrong with a businessman? Why not Richard the doctor? Doctors are bad. Did I say doctors are bad? I only thought Michael because someday he'll be a college professor. Oh, a goodbye, Mr. Chips, huh, Molly? Okay, please. Businessmen are not educated. You had a bad life with a businessman. Would you want your own daughter to have anything worse? Uh, I didn't make a good home. We raised a bad family. A professor you want. A man working his fingers to the bone for what kind of appreciation? For what kind of life? Teaching all day and staying up all night correcting test papers? That's a life for my daughter. Education isn't all a bed of roses, my dear Molly. It's a badly paid, very hard and thankless profession. There's something wrong with my Sally, the doctor. He has a bad life. He hasn't got a good family. He's not a respected man in his community. His wife is suffering. Doctors are all right if you want to be up all night answering telephone bells. Businessmen don't have telephone bells ringing. How much does say, your telephone bell ring? What did I ring? say? What did you say? He said he's yes, a nice boy. Yes, yes. Did I say he's a nice boy? Did you tell me he's a nice boy? Wait a minute! I think there are a few things you're forgetting. In the first place, Rosie's got to make the decision herself. You're absolutely right, Sammy. 
And I just wanted to tell you all that I decided not to go out with any one of them, Richard, Michael, or Stanley. I hope that meets with your approval, and I hope it makes you happy because it makes me miserable. And if you are so concerned, please do me a favor. Don't give me any advice unless I ask for it. I'm not going to say another word in this house about what I do or who I go with. I want to make my own decisions. <laughs> and stepped out of the house. Upstairs even now, moping. What did we do that was so terrible? Well, from now on, David, not one word, not one syllable out of my mouth. Me neither. All I said was Richard. Was that so terrible? Nobody said anything so terrible. You have to be careful. Rosie's growing up and she wants to think for herself. My word. My word. Family's right. Please, let's make a promise, let's make a compact. From now on, no advice to Rosalie unless she asks for it. Promise? For the time being, no comments. No comments, David? Not a word. Uh, Rosalie, why don't you sit down a little bit with the family? I can't. I have to brush my shoes. I'm going out. Someone's coming to pick me up in a little while. Oh. No questions, no comments, and no asking. I'm glad she's not moping. Well, maybe she's going out with Richard anyway. Don't ask her. Who's asking? Sammy, maybe it would be your suggestion that we shut ourselves in our room so we won't see who she's going out with? I think you can trust Rosie. She's a pretty sensible girl. Her father can't ask her daughter who she's going out with. Yes, What's happening promise. in the world? Promise or no promise, I have a right to know. She, uh, me, I think I... I'll wear the blue dress, Ma. Oh, very nice, darling. The blue dress? That means Michael. She always wore the blue dress when she went out with Michael. Ma, did you see the bobby pin? Uh, on your dresser, dear darling. You wearing your hair up or down? I'm going to wear it down. Down? That's for Richard. Did my coat come from the cleaners yet, Ma? The long one? From the closet. The long coat? That's for Stanley. So which one is it? Not going to ask. I'm glad she's not moping. Should be here in a minute. Oh, oh. let me know. Oh, my. You're certainly very dressed up. He must be a pretty special fella. Huh? <laughs> what do you mean? A any fella that my Rosalie would go with would have to be special, no, David? It must be very nice. <laughs> very. Mm. Oh, I'll take it. Good evening. Good evening, Jonathan. May I present my parents, my Uncle David and my brother Sammy. This is Jonathan Melton. Very nice to meet you, I'm sure. I have a charming daughter, Mr. Goldberg. Delightful. Ready, dear? You don't want to miss the overture. Good night, everybody. Good night. The man she's going out with. Boys, all right, but men? Once she can go out with a man. You approve? Did I say I approve, Jake, but just... No buts! I'll stop this if it's the last thing I then do. Don't stop Jake again. is right, Molly. There's a non-written law... What that... law? Parents, Molly. Parents. I don't care, Stan. Well, what if it has been three weeks? I don't think that's any business of yours. Certainly I know he's 39. No, I don't care. I don't like you interfering. Well, if that's the way you feel, I'll do as I please, all right? All right, goodbye. I don't know why people love to interfere in other people's lives. It must be one of the natural laws like gravity. What do you mean natural laws? They can't seem to mind their own business, any of them. I'll take it. It must be for me. Hello? Oh, Richard. No, I'm busy tonight. With whom? Well, I don't think that's any concern of yours. What gossip? Well, what if he does have three children? I don't care if he has five. That doesn't enter into it at all. I don't want to discuss it. All right, then. Goodbye. It's like a bunch of old gossip. Rosalie? I'll take it. Please. Hello? Mike, you too. <laughs> Not the music. I haven't heard Couch. Well, I don't care if he's been married twice or three times. That's his business. And whether I care or not is my business. Well, all right then. All right. 
Okay, then, goodbye. Well, I don't care if you call or if you don't call. Goodbye. Excuse me, I'm going up to my room. I have homework to do. Did you hear? Three children. Married twice, three times. What kind of a man is that for Rosie to go out with? You have to do something, Jay. This is a crisis. I'm telling you, leave her alone. There isn't a thing we can do about it. If there was, don't you think I'd talk to her? And in the meantime? Try to forget it. Forget it? Forget two wives and three children? I'm besides myself, and you're doing crossword puzzles. Very oh, nice. Ma, please. Dave. Dave, she's going out with the elderly gentleman again tonight. What should I do? Should I go upstairs and say something? Well, what will you say to her? I'll say, Rosalie, May and September, don't you? Jane? Jake. Do you know what I heard today? What? I heard he was in the jewelry store. He was buying a ring. It can only mean one thing, Ma. Now, this has gone too far. It's more than a father can stand. And I can't stand it. I'm not upset. I'll take I'll it. I'll get it. I got it. Hello? Oh, yes, it is. Uh, who should I say is calling? Mrs. Melton? Janetton's mother? Molly, it's the mother. Oh. No? That's the straw that breaks the camp. Say I'm in the bathtub. I can't come to the telephone. Take the number, I'll call her back. Uh, hello? Uh, well, Mrs. Goldwick is not available at the moment. So if you give me your phone number, she'll call you back. Uh, 2452? Oh, thank you. No, it must. Can you imagine? It can only mean one thing, Molly. Wedding plans. And I hope you're satisfied. It doesn't have to mean a wedding, Pa. Then what should it mean? For what other reason would Mrs. Melton call? Call her back, Molly, or I will. Oh, let me calm myself. I'm pounding. David, dial me. Dial me, Lou. Two, four, four something, you four, said. Five, two. two, four, five, two. Two, four, five, two. Mrs. Melton? Oh, give me. Give me. Give me. Hello? This is Miss Nelson. Uh, this is uh, Rosalie's mother speaking. You're Jonathan's mother? Well, uh, yes. She wants to come over here to talk to me. Ask her what for? Can you acquaint me, please, with the, with the topic of your conversation which you wish to converse with me? Yeah. Too lengthy, too lengthy, she said. Well, very well. Yes, bye. Why didn't you come to the point? Why didn't you tell her? Because she said it was too lengthy on the telephone. Well, Molly, this time I'm speaking as the father of the house and I will not be stopped. There's a point where psychology stops and a parent begins. That Jonathan will not cross my threshold again. Now call down Rosalie. Her father wants to talk to her. Rosalie? Your father wishes to talk to thee. I'll be down in a minute, Pa. If anybody has to talk to her, let me be the one. Oh, no. I'll talk to her this time. And when he rings that bell, I'll talk to him also. Enough is enough. Ma, did Jonathan's mother call you? Yes, she did. She's a wonderful woman. Is she coming over to see you? Yes. Going out again tonight, huh? I finished my homework. Sit down, Rosalie. I have a great deal to say to you. How can it wait till I come back? No, it... That's him. Right. Come in, Henry. Uh, I'd like you to meet my family. My mother, my father, my uncle David, and my brother Sammy. This is Henry Thomas. Oh, good How do you do? evening. How do you do? Yeah. Uh, pa, we're a little late. Can we talk later? Later, Rosalie. Much later. Ma, ask Mrs. Carey and some of your friends over when Jonathan's mother comes. She wants to talk to you about a committee for the community chest. Oh, thank you. I will. Good night. Come on, Henry. Good, Good night. night. Have Good a night. wonderful time. <sighs> now, if you ask me, that's what I call a wonderful boy. Oh.